Bowers on uh, Sam Peckinpah. You drink the Wild Bunch and the Valley wow. Table Hog. A lot of really truly great things. So uh, it'll, it'll be done someday. I don't know when. But anyway, that'll qualify for Cowboys a little bit. Yeah. Hi. Hi. How you doing, brother? I'm pretty good. <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you, too. <laughs> did you work with Sam Peck and Paul? Yeah, I did a lot of work with him. It, 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 back when we were young and crazy, well, there's quite a story to tell there. So it's not all work. There's <laughs> 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 just a considerable amount of playing. But uh, he turned out to be one of the masters of all time when it comes to the, a certain period of the West, transitional West, just before the pickup took over. In fact, he was one transition ahead of me. So we, we, got, we became close friends in, because we were work, both working in, in our life, giving our lives to the transition of the West. In the nineties into the pickup West where it took over and dominated, still does. Well, no, cell phones do now. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, we won't go into that because I, it, it wouldn't do me any good to get an electronic brain. I couldn't, I couldn't make it fit in this little I would sure try. How did you meet Sam Peck and Paul? <laughs> he, he never fit into anything. He was in and out. He'd have people commit to the high low country big names, uh, and then they, he gets stalled for red leaving for another film, and as you guys know from the films that have been shot around here, you've got to go from the beginning to the end with the film. You can't have people going off here and there because there's millions of dollars and millions of viewers at stake. So that's a, it's just a story of how, how our lives were tied together creatively, and that one book continued right on right on through until Martin Scorsese found it and he, got, he, he could get it made. He produced it. Tell us about Woody Crumbo. Woody oh, Crumbo. Woody Crumbo is, uh, if, if I believed in a, if I believed in a, strong enough in a saint here on this earth, uh, it, it would be Rick Woody Crumbo because he took me on when I came off that little cow ranch over in the northeast part of the state where I finally named it the Hilo country. Uh, I was I was really desperate to get a, a mentor in the artistic world uh, that I fit with. It's, it's, I suited him and he suited me. And just cured by pure chance. Uh, it worked out. He was having a, a show, uh, the first cause I'd ever seen by an Indian artist. They were great, big, and magic things. And then he was having a show in the lobby of the old Sage Brush Inn, which is still operating in there. And I, I, I went in there one afternoon, and I was just stunned at work. And I went in there with a little bar and asked the bartender, I said, who, who did that? Who did those wonderful work? I never saw all that great Indian paintings in oil, they were big. And he said, why should he come home? So he'd be around here about four or five o'clock. So he comes over and has a chair and sees if anybody wants to talk to him about his painting. So I just put a chair up there and just waited. <laughs> I waited for hours. He finally showed up and I got up to go shake hands with him. He said, well, I, I think I know you. He didn't know who it was. <laughs> How could I not love him? <laughs> he took he took me on, and, and, and I, I don't know whether I'm a good student for him or not. I have no idea, but I do know this: he really had fun with what we were doing, and we did all kinds of creativity. Woody Crumbo is a marvelous, marvelous human being. I I, I think of him every day of my life. My whole family follow uh, suit in that. It's a grand, it's a grand privilege. Thank you for asking that question. I can't, I can't tell you how much I love it, and how much I miss it. You don't find that. I don't know who that was. <laughs> he was a pretty keen guy, wasn't he? Oh, Tony Rayner. 
occasion. Mm-hmm. And he said he didn't know how to spell his name of the town. <laughs> so I, I, I censored Blue Feather for a while for that. And he still doesn't know. He gets in the <laughs> Max. Max, yeah. Doughbelly Price, Horse Thief Shorty Watkins, Curly Murray, all my horse. Oh, all, all thieves. How did, right, right. How did you meet them? I love them. How did you meet them, Max? How did I meet them? To, uh, at the Cachino Lodge Bar or? No, well, and I did that a lot too, but. <laughs> long John Dunn. And he saw all of them, and he introduced me. I don't know why old John liked me. I just said, Tom, the little old ex cowboy. Yeah. But he did. He, those were his very best friends. <laughs> the ones he could distrust the most. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they used to like to joke amongst each other telling me, Pardon? Yeah, we've been to school, meaning they went to the Kansas penitentiary. <laughs> well, it's a, they have a good supervisor there, they tell me. <laughs> he Some gets fact. an education. How has Taos changed since you lived here, Max? Well, my wife drives me places and hear about it. I don't know, a while back I went over to get me a new pickup. And she took it, I've never driven it. She's, she's still driving that pickup. And I, I didn't know that her vocabulary extended to being in her cousin 19 different languages. <laughs> but she, she's a master of all of them. <laughs> it's a, it, was, it was a lot of fun looking at old places that had disappeared and yet the landscape still drives you crazy. And then I tell you, I, I know all of you love the town. And experience this. We went out to Old Mason where we used to live right over in Mason. When I first moved here, we had a little land. And we drove all that way back and came back. Suddenly there was that wondrous house reservation. And there it was. You know, like it was when I was here the first time in my life. I was here when I was 12 years old. My boss, my ranch boss, came over here for something and brought me along. And I, I thought, my, isn't that wonderful, wonderful that we still have places that are preserved? And so then we go out to see our old house and we couldn't recognize it. You know, Woody and I and old Bruce Martinez, any of you ever remember him, the wood carver? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Santero. And he became a modernist, actually. <laughs> well, we all, we all love this, this town, this country here so much that I think, I think many times that when you start to describe it, you have to have a little contest with yourself. You may love it too much. <laughs> You're afraid. I, I know when I write about town, I, 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 I start out and I'm going to tell some little thing. I wind up bragging on it <laughs> every time in my story. 